welcome to Gen Friends. I'm your host, Sherry Hudson Passy from Carolina Girl Genealogy. And I've got this amazing panel. And we've got somebody new on our panel because we are talking relative race. And, you know, people will just say, hey, we love relative race. So can we come and talk about relative race? So let me let me first go to Awen. Now, guys, I've known Awen since she was like 13, since you were like 13. Yeah, like about 13. Which tells you how really long time. Was. <laughs> a long, long time because I was an adult when I knew her when she was there. So anyway, she yes. is, you, you may know her from Wikitree if you're familiar with Wikitree. Um, if you're not, I will just uh, put a link in so you guys can find out what Wikitree. Do you want to just throw out really quick what Wikitree is? In yeah, case? we're a free collaborative site. Basically, our goal is to build one global family tree that's completely free and accessible for everyone and it is as accurate as it can be. And we're a super fun, friendly community. Of- yeah genealogists and we you know come and join us it's free try it out <laughs> absolutely absolutely I thought you might as well do that just in case people don't know uh, yeah. I will put a link in but but Alan's going to try to come on uh throughout the season and and talk about relative race so we're so glad that you're here I'm and- so glad you asked <laughs> and we got some of the usual suspects here <laughs> we've got Laura Hedgecock from Treasure Chest of Memories hi Laura hi I'm so glad you're here Thank you. And we've got Melissa Barker. Our archive lady is here. We're always so glad you're here, Melissa. Thank you for being here tonight. Hey, everybody. Glad to be here. Well, we are going to be talking about day two of season 11 of Relative Race. And oh, my gosh. I mean, they're just right out of the box. I mean, they it just it's like, really? <laughs> are we going to have enough to get all the way to day 10? Or are we going to have like Dan always laughs and says, you know, third cousin six times removed? <laughs> what they're yeah. going to get to so he's always you know talking to us about that and he'll be he'll be back soon he actually decided to go out of town i so did mary they didn't ask my permission but they went out of town so hopefully and mary is actually having her own relative race moments um in ireland so we can't wait for her to get back and so she can share that with us but we started day two with um, team black and carolyn was getting a beautiful necklace from her sister her sister oh, that keeps gorgeous. calling her my love I know. So sweet. That was so sweet. And it said best friends and sister and, you know, that type of thing on it. So I thought that was really, really sweet. Um, Thaddeus, the drawing. What did you guys think about that drawing from his from his biological dad? Oh, my God. I thought that was oh. pretty cool. Yeah. Go ahead, anyone. No, I was going to say, I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, it was. It, it, and yes, it did look like him. And I guess those were his memories because he mm. knew him as a child. You know, he knew him as a toddler. And to me, that's what it looked like, a little toddler Thaddeus face you know, on that. And then he was saying, well, this is where this is where I got my artistic ability from. Because right. he looks at his mom and he goes, because I didn't get her from there. She's blessed. But she's, I just- <laughs> she's such a good sport. <laughs> she's a really good sport. She's. I love her. I love the whole fact that this is the first time that an adoptive mom has gone which is amazing yes yeah. it, it like, is. I, was... I, love, I love that we got a little bit more <clears throat> backstory with yeah. um that he came into her life when she had just had a big loss yes and i i that was my i i like knowing that and it kind of explains the bond a little the bit bond too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and I love it. And y'all know that I love it because I do have some kids that are that are adopted. And and I would hope, I don't know how hard that would be though. It's my one, gosh. Yeah, it's one thing to say, yeah, if you want to go find your biological family, go do it. But to actually be there on that journey with them and I don't know. I hope that I would be supportive and not go, wait a second, I'm still your mom. <laughs> still your mom. No. Yeah, it would be really yeah. hard. Yeah, I'm adopted. So I was thinking about my mom and just, you know, I've been able to find my birth mother and then various things about my birth father. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so she's heard about stuff, but I was trying to imagine like, you know, her like in that situation. And I think that would be so hard, hard as the adopted mom. Yeah. To not feel like this is my kid. I know. I know your kid. He's my kid. Yeah, exactly. I agree with you. But she did say I told them to wait till they were 18 because we didn't yeah. need interference with. Yeah, um, which is smart. Yeah, I which thought. is smart. And and I told my kids, yes, but let's wait till you're mature enough. Yeah. Because some of these stories are really difficult. You know, it's really difficult to hear why you were given up for adoption. And it's hard to hear, you know, the, the, the stories of 
maybe drug abuse or um, abuse in general or whatever it may be. And so you need to be mature enough to hear that. I think Melissa, were you trying to say something? Oh, I thought no, you were. I'm, I'm good. No. Okay. I thought you were trying to trying to say something. Anyway, so yeah, I just I think that's remarkable that she's so and she's like, and I'm not going anywhere, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. So she's strong and and I just I just really love that about her. I just think it's I just think it's wonderful. Um, let's see. Um, I'm trying to think of what else anybody got. Did anybody else get anything? As they were leaving. Oh, um, Team Green got to go play tennis, which I thought yes. was really yeah. cool. That was, that was great. And I loved how she said, and you know, sometimes the gate was locked. And so we would just we curl, the, curl in and go play tennis. And I thought well, it was a good thing because Nolan and Leah looked like maybe they'd hit a ball a time or two because if somebody had taken me, <laughs> I would say, please don't get me on camera. Because <laughs> this would not be a pretty scene. So it, it looked like maybe they both at least hit a ball before. <laughs> so that was yeah. good. That was really good. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, Team Blue. Um, I'm trying to think. Did they get anything? I was writing everything down. Let me. No, they it. didn't. Mm -hmm. I just, yeah, I I wanted to make sure that um, I didn't forget any of that stuff. So it was time for text messages. Like <laughs> that luggage. That luggage. That, that was funny. Oh my gosh, the luggage. That luggage cracked me up. She should just leave it in the car. Uh, yeah. No. Grab like an overnight bag for the, you know. <laughs> she didn't want to be carrying that in and out every day. That is so funny. It is just so funny, you know, that luggage is taken there to back. Because, well, you know what? By by the next day, by tomorrow, it'll be day three, and they'll have they'll know how to put it in now. Yeah, they've done it, <laughs> they've done it enough. It shouldn't be a, an issue after this if they just put it in the same way. <laughs> so funny enough. Yeah, it is. Cracks me up. It just cracks me up. Team Green had kind of a hard time getting out on the road when it was time to oh. go. And they had to turn around and, and go back because they were having map issues. And uh, maybe this isn't a shortcut issue. That's got to be so nerve wracking, don't you think? To Yeah, I was thinking about it. It's like a risk reward. And you think, OK, if this shortcut really is, we could we could yeah. save some time. But then then she lost her confidence and like, yeah, this is really bad. Let's not do it. Right. Well, remember a couple of seasons ago, Team Black decided to do that shortcut through northern New Mexico. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they're watching that one. We're like, don't, don't do that. Yeah. Oh, okay, they're doing it. <laughs> it's right. It's right. And see, um, that's where you live right now. Yeah. In, yeah. in New Mexico. And I used to live there and I'm just going, oh, no, no, no. Oh, no. This is <laughs> not going to be good. It's Anytime not. you think there's a shortcut, there probably isn't a shortcut. So don't do it. Not a shortcut. So um, they were worried they were going to lose some time doing that. But it was, uh, yeah, they're just, these teams are, are, are really funny. I'm loving instead of the texting between teams that this year they're going to do the video mm -hmm. <laughs> the little video messages I thought those were great so they were team blue and team red were sending each other messages you know instead of smack texting <laughs> smack, smack video <laughs> video I really I love the bonds that develop between the teams yes like it's not you know you're finding your biological family but they you really do find like your relative race family and oh sure it's, it's really cool to see them you know the way that they different ways that they bond exactly exactly and and we know from past seasons that they do get to meet each other not for a long period of time but they do get to meet each other and talk to each other before the race starts so they don't walk mm -hmm. in it's not totally blind totally yeah and so they kind of know a little bit about each other yeah so that's kind of fun but they, but they do and they make I know that um and we've talked about this before there's a, a fans of relative race Facebook page and there is a um a relative race live uh Facebook page too and somebody posted something about um the, the teams and somebody from another season came on and said, you got to understand they're just joking around with each other because we bond and we're a family yeah. and we love each other. And so don't take anything serious because we love each other. And, and, Oh, they were talking about why do they always have to have a penalty? Why oh, can't yeah. it just be a, and why can't it just be, okay, you won. So you get five minutes ahead, Laura. Well, and, and that really is all it is. And I don't know why Dan calls it a penalty, yeah. but he's like, so you penalize you, you, know, you two teams are going to penalize the other teams. And really what they did 
was they got a bonus of yeah. 10 points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it yeah. You know, a lot. I mean, you can always look at it both ways yes, because it's an advantage. But I was like, that's not a penalty. <laughs> an advantage. It's an advantage. So it's just the words. It's just the it's yeah. just it really the is. It's just the words. Yeah. And yeah. I don't know why he kept calling it that. I was yeah. like <laughs> I kind of got confused um with the blue team because yeah. um when they when they were given their instructions on where to go for their um uh, for their challenge, they said Tucker, Georgia. And then uh -huh. when they got their instructions to go to their relative's home, they said Decatur, Georgia. So I was on Google Maps, oh. but it was eight miles in between. Oh, okay. So very like, good, okay. Mary. Very good, Mary. Yeah. I know. You're I did Mary in that one. <laughs> I always love it, Mary, because she will. But I thought, wait a minute, yeah. they said Tucker, Georgia, and then they said Decatur. I said, good, I don't know anything about Georgia. So I, said, well, so I Googled it and I said, okay. Oh, good, right, I didn't eight miles. That. I good go for you. Home. Good yeah. for you. I didn't, I didn't catch that. I didn't even catch that. Yeah. Yeah. Too funny. They did show a little bit. Of, somebody was saying um, last, uh, last night when I was live tweeting, I would really like to find out what else is going on in that car because <laughs> they're in the car for hours. Right. Oh, I know. Uh, but not as, not as much as it used to be. Sometimes they were in those cars for six and eight hours a day and they don't seem to be doing that as long. And maybe usually, they have a bigger budget this year. So maybe they can fly an hour. More. That's right. They can fly people an hour, maybe two hours tops. Yes, Laura. I have a theory. Okay. I know nothing. I know nothing. It's just my theory. <laughs> my theory is that these aren't all these people's homes. Oh no, they're not. And I think a lot they, of them aren't. Yeah. And they've yeah. just optimized the routes and hours a day so that yes. the teams are doing something, you know, similar. similar mm -hmm. And then they can spend more of their recording time with yes. people with people and not because Exactly. That would be smart to do that. I mean, just yeah. remember, was it a season or two ago when one of the relatives that they met said, this is a beautiful house? Yeah. <laughs> it definitely wasn't their house. Exactly. Yeah. I agree. And with there you. was the couple a couple of years ago, a blue couple, and she got mad at him for eating his potato chips too loudly. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, car. my gosh. That was, that was so funny. That was hysterical. But they did have that scene that they showed us. Uh, with Thaddeus talking about who am I going to, you know, who do you think you're going to meet today? And, and that emotion of that he had met his biological father. And he was just as surprised as I think all of us were that day one. Yeah. I mean, how do you talk that, you know, a day one, the biological father, it's like, okay, that's who I wanted to meet. So, you know, so. yeah, I'll just go home now. <laughs> yeah. If you go home, I'll be happy. Yeah. Oh, well, so maybe the money biological <laughs> Maybe yeah, his biological yeah. father has given him 12 siblings. Yeah, really. <laughs> exactly. So there's a lot of siblings to meet. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's talk for a few minutes about that challenge. I like that challenge. And again, I can I do say, that challenge. I, I said do that. It needs to be in the relative race yes. family reunion book, game book. Yes. We keep where we're trying. And you know, when we're, yes. we're trying, but they, I think there should be a book for the challenges for my, family reunions. My husband really would like that a lot. Yeah. He's yeah. always saying like, they need to make these so that people who aren't in relative race can do these games. Exactly. These we challenges. have been saying this probably since season two. And so, <laughs> so far, I believe that. No, no think of the yet. money they could make selling those relative race remote cars. It, oh, yes. I would buy one. Yes. Ooh. And why didn't the teams take their cars? I mean, they have their, they're not going to be able to take the Kia home. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. They should have given, maybe they did. We just don't know it. Right. But I thought well, that was yeah. so, somebody has a big, big enough suitcase. <laughs> there you go. I thought that was a really fun game and, and something it was fun. It didn't, it, it didn't take any athleticism. It didn't take any big brain power. It just took remembering how to run a remote control. So it took them, all of them, a few minutes because they kept going over to the grass. And that's what I would have done. My car would have been <laughs> all over, all over the place. So it seem to, none of the teams seem to have a lot of trouble like they do no. on some of their challenges. So that's, you know. No, this was really good. They called it, um, soar for more and and so once they got it over the the ramp it had to land on the circles of 10 20 or 30 and what i thought was interesting is if the the wheels landed on two they would add the points i thought that was mm -hmm. really cool that they would so if when if the front wheels went on 20 and the back were on 10 they would they would count it as the the 30 points they, they had to get up to 300 points and they had to take turns and um 
I know Leah for a while said, I'm just going to quickly do mine because I can't do it. And I'll let Nolan do it. <laughs> He's really good at this. Sharon was like, what? She was like running that. Um, they said she could do that for a living. <laughs> it was yeah. like, I'm in Karen. I said Sharon. I'm in Karen because it was the. Oh, oh, well, I, was I know who the Sharon. Sharon. I know who the Sharon is in a minute. <laughs> so, um, Karen was doing it. Yeah, she was. She was doing a great job with that. It was like she, she had was just been doing you know remote control cars for all her life. So she was really, really rocking that challenge. That was really, really good. Um, uh, what was I going to say about that? Oh, probably that was it. Just that, how good that she was doing with that challenge. And I just thought it was so fun because sometimes they get so stressed out with these challenges. It's nice to have one where everybody just seems to really just enjoy it and uh, have a, fun. have a really good time doing it. And and we're not sitting back going, Oh, I wouldn't want to do Whoa. that. <laughs> yeah. I think most people were saying, Ooh, it would be fun. I want to do that challenge. That would be really great. So, so and I think, you know, I think Laura is right about their, their, their showing more of the family. It seems like to mm-hmm. me showing more of their relationships. And, and is that why they stopped doing like the selfies and the photos? I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I don't know if that's, that's why, but yeah, they're not doing the selfies anymore. Well, maybe it's because they really, they really conquered that. I think everybody mm-hmm. by season 10 knew to practice getting a selfie. Yep. Yeah, so it wasn't it was a problem. Easy enough to find a sign and maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Because know, season, like they might it was throw really, something new in. Yeah. They might throw something new in. Exactly. Because it was funny. The first few seasons, it was funny because they couldn't do the selfie. <laughs> and they kept, you know, going, eh, you got to do it again. But then, like Laura said, it got to the point where, it's it's easy and and with the 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 phones they've got now it'd be easy peasy to do a selfie so it's yeah you know it's it's not it, really a challenge not really a challenge anymore and so you know so I don't know maybe they'll throw something else in like last season they threw in the picture the photo challenge that we all voted for ahead of time but they didn't have us they didn't have they didn't have help for this one so I don't for this season so. I thought it was very funny how Team Red was very excited in the car before they got to their relative's house. Oh, I know. They were I'm so excited. So excited. So excited. He he just that is cracks me up. <laughs> He's such a character. He just I just love him. He just cracks me up. And he, I'm sure they're having all of them are having such a great time in the car. Um yeah. but especially that he is and his mom. <laughs> I'm sure they're having a great time. They probably could have a good time together anywhere. Yeah, I think so too. I think so too. So why don't we go ahead and talk about who he met then since we're, we're talking about him. So, you know, here he's met his biological father the day before. So who could he possibly meet this time? I mean, the minute you saw this, this young man, and do you notice they're all standing outside this season? They're not knocking on doors. Yeah, and they did that last. I think a couple for a couple of seasons now. Maybe, maybe they've been outside more. They've been outside yeah. more instead of, instead of, uh, <clears throat> instead of, you know, open the door and they walk up and they're, and they're there. It's so probably a producer that's calling and like they're 25 yeah. seconds out. Yeah. Yeah. So come wait outside. Exactly. Come wait outside because they are, they'll be there in just a minute. But who we met was this young man named Isaiah and Isaiah. His brother. Is his brother. Yeah. Yeah. And boy, you could tell it. You could tell mm-hmm. it. there was yeah. a very, oh yeah very very strong family resemblance and this brother is his maternal brother and that's where i said sharon instead of karen because sharon is the name of his uh, biological mom and so and that turned out to be kind of a sad story they showed him pictures but they said due to circumstances he might not be able to meet her on the show yeah yeah so um i thought he handled that super well Mm -hmm. Like he was honest and said it would be disappointing. Yeah. But then he just quickly went on to what really mattered. Um, And yeah, I thought that was just, I thought he handled that situation super well. He did too. I did uh-huh. too. I thought he did too. Cause that's got to be really disappointing because you know that he, he wants to meet her, but at yeah. least he knows she's still alive. At least he knows she had been looking for him. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That that was. That so was she a- would talk about him, and she looked for him. Mm-hmm. Now there was another season that we were kind of told that maybe this one would not m- see their mother, but they ended up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. And so we still might. We still. Maybe something. We still might. Yeah. And what? 
what um, Isaiah told him was unfortunately she was having problems with with drugs when he was when Thaddeus was born and he was removed and put in mm-hmm. foster care and that she's just he hinted that she's still having trouble but he didn't say I mean if it we, we have no idea she could just be sick with something we, well we she said well, they, he did say that she know. was in the hospital and she'd had major surgery Surgeries. yeah and so we don't major know what surgery. we don't know anything yeah. about that so um it's possible and and you know look what happened last season mm-hmm. they were yeah. Again, so, yeah yeah they, karen, karen was really surprised to know that sharon had been looking for him yeah. she mm-hmm. never knew yeah. that yeah yeah um, but I was going to ask you, I mean, that's by design though, right? If yes, once, by- once they terminate parental rights, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. the adopted family are not going to have, you no. know, they're just going to go forward. Exactly. Because it, as soon as you, as soon as you sign that paperwork and you adopt that child, that, that child is legally yours and they're trying to protect the child, especially if there was any type of abuse or like that. exactly and so it's to protect the child so the child can grow up and you know but once the child is 18 the child usually can start looking for you know for, for their family and so um yeah I just thought it was interesting and, and I liked um I liked uh Karen's response to that that you know he needs to fill this void in his life and I'm glad to know and I'm glad that he's hearing that his biological mom had been looking for him because that's you know that's the exact opposite of what he had assumed for yes. his whole life and so you know it completely flips his narrative that he's had for 20 exactly. 20 years exactly exactly and i and i think too that sometimes it's important to to let these kids know that legally they're not allowed to look for them so don't assume yeah you know because yeah. they're legally they're not allowed to look for you yeah um, and the records yeah, are still- i don't know ab- about you sherry but i know my mm-hmm. sister when like she was counseled by the adoption agency not to answer questions that the the child didn't ask oh right like, exactly yeah that's what, and so it could also have been and something that he never voiced it could be it just something that went on in his head that he never right. said to her so there was not an opportunity to dissuade him from that yeah from that yeah because my so my brother and I are both adopted and I I knew from I don't remember ever not knowing that mm-hmm. I was adopted it's just that's how I got to where I got to I never had any ill feelings I never felt abandoned that was just part of my story <clears throat> and my brother was kind of the opposite he he just you know, really felt like abandonment and a lot of those common issues that adopted kids feel, but he didn't talk about it uh, until, you know, maybe five or 10 years ago. So it could very well be, you know, the same thing where he had all these things going on inside and didn't know how yeah. to express it or. Yeah, very, very, very possible. Exactly. And, and people, I think sometimes it's, it's a different situation. It's different when you adopt a child out of foster care than yeah. it is when you adopt a child because the mother decides I can't raise this child, maybe she's, you know, 16 and, yeah. and places her child with an agency for adoption. It's a totally different world. Good point. It's Good a totally point. different world. And so, um, yeah. So anyway, so I'm glad that he was able to understand that, that she had been looking for him. And we know, we know that, um, we know the season's ended. <laughs> They've met everybody they're going to meet. And so I'm hoping that whether he met her on the show, I'm pretty confident that once the show got over, he was able able to go and meet her. And so I'm hoping that when the show so. is over, we'll be able to hear and find out what happened mm-hmm. with that, even if it's not um even on, uh, not on there. And guys, I am going to turn my camera off for just a minute because my battery is doing something weird. So why <laughs> don't you guys talk about Nolan and who he met? And I will be back on my camera in just a second. Oh, okay. Okay, go ahead. So Nolan drove up in Jacksonville, Florida, and there were two young men outside who were Devin and Tyrese. And they were... 17 and 18, so very close to his age. He was 20, because I said it's 17, 18, and then Nolan's 20. Yeah, so 
And then I don't know whether it was, De I, now I don't know which one was which. I think it was Devin that then said a few minutes later that he'd been smiling so much that his face hurt. Yeah, that was Devin. It was. Oh, so cute. He was so that cute. Was cute. That was so cute. Yeah. And you could really see, like, you could see the instant bond there. Oh, yeah. It was so well, you could see the watch. instant that they were brothers. <laughs> it was like they're all that, but you could also see, like, there's always a few seconds or a few minutes of awkwardness. I think yeah. theirs was a few nanoseconds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they were just like, so that. And, so cute. and Leah was right in there with them. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, and you know, what, what, what kind of got me was the fact that the brothers, the two brothers was taught, were said more than once that they thought they were the only ones yes. in the family that was, you know. And so I think they, you know, sitting on the couches, they really were like all inspired by the fact that there was another family member of any kind another brother. out there. Yeah, there was another brother. Because so they just thought they were just them too. They, they were, were Kayla's, Kayla's brothers, brothers from last from last week. Yeah. But they said they didn't have a father figure. They didn't have anybody, an older brother. And you could just see that Nolan was just going to just do Oh, he said, on. he said, I'm going to be He's there. So, stepping yeah. right up and he was going to take that on. But I mean, they just, the way they were looking at each other just was so, I loved it. I just loved the way they were looking at each other and just so amazed to see each other I thought that was great because like Laura said sometimes when they do meet each other there's that little bit of awkwardness mm. but they just didn't seem to be it just seemed to be they just at the minute they looked in each other's eyes they were just like this is my brother it's natural and yeah yeah that was that was wonderful that was really wonderful and I loved how Leo was saying he has Nolan has had this he grew up with all these big brothers and sisters so he's had their example and so now he can be a big brother. Yes. Yeah, he gets to be that. Yeah. So what I thought was super touching is the brother, the younger brothers, they were saying, um, you know, we're going to make up for time. We want to, I don't know, we will look out for you. And Nolan, and I wrote it down because I thought it was really so touching. He said, you don't have to be anyone but yes. you. Right. And just that yeah, unconditional yes. acceptance to walk into yeah. somebody's yeah. life and say, I'm here to love you. Right. And you just be you. And that's all I'm asking. Yeah. Yeah. That was, was sweet. that was a sweet, sweet reunion with them. They're going to be, yeah. tight, I think, for a long, long time. I think they're just going to keep in contact all the time. It just I think that's one of the relationships that's really going to work. <laughs> Sometimes you wonder. But I, I think that one's really going to work, I think. And I think that, and we talked about this last week, I think Leah and 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 that part of the, they, they want to bring them all in. It's not like a, well, we'll be the, you know, adopted. Yeah, family. that was pretty awesome. Yeah, you'll be the biological family. But they're like, we want to bring you <laughs> into our family. <laughs> and so. What I, I liked that. about oh, all of them is it's almost like, you know, Nolan's finding his family, but like with his sister, it almost felt like you could put it from her point of view too. Like she was like, I just found yes. my family. It was almost like she was yeah. the one who was looking for family and Leah was like, come on, we're here. We're ready. Exactly. And the same exactly. with the brothers. It was like, yep. hey, like, come on, we're ready. Family, let's yeah. go. Yeah. And I think that happens every season. Is there somebody, somebody's story, at least one of the relatives it's not just the the team, the contestant member. It's whomever yeah. they meet. Is that yeah. is something extra special for them too? They're either meeting their first biological family member that they've ever yeah. met, or you know, it's answering a question for them as well. And I just I think it's just so so special. Yeah. And I think it's so lovely too when we see it happen with si siblings because I think people they always think of people wanting to find their biological parents to answer mm -hmm. questions. But really what can be the more meaningful relationship is the biological siblings, yeah. the people that you share something with, especially oh. you had a similar journey or things like that. Exactly. So I, I'm I'm just really loving how they're, they've been featuring right. the, those yeah. as much as the parental relationship. Oh, yeah. yeah, well, you know, I, I think in this case too, ahead. that Nolan, had such a wonderful upbringing. Mm -hmm. and I think the brothers really had a difficult time. Right. Cause he did and, ask them about their dad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I think that, you know, 
Um, now he can be, um, oddly enough, even though there's two years difference, sort of a father figure and a, yeah. a rock that they can lean sure. on. Absolutely. And I, I think Laura had a good point too, is that these siblings, you don't blame. I know sometimes they blame their biological parents for, you know, this is a life and why couldn't you have done something different, but there's no blame for a sibling, <laughs> you know, sure. the sibling it's, it's they're victim of circum there's they're victims of circumstances just as as they are and so there's no judgments there's no you know why did you give me up thing is oh we were we we went through this together we just didn't know about each other kind of thing you know and so i think that's a lot of that bonding is is because of that it's not um a judgmental kind of thing and, and tell me all these questions and or answer answer all these questions and tell me why tell me why it's like okay, we're siblings. And I, and I think that's why yeah. it's so, fun and so special. Um, team blue, John found somebody. Yay. <laughs> Yay for John. <laughs> it's like, I, you know, we always worry about these teams that, that, that they're strangers, you know, and it just seems uneven, but you know, I really do think we talked about this a lot last season when they did this is that I think they know going into it, that it's not going to be it's not even going to be every other time. It's going to be who they can find when they can find them. And so I think they're prepared for that, but it's got to still be hard to, to, oh, well, you found somebody last time and now it's still not my turn. So I was really glad that John was able to find and who he found was a first cousin. And I thought it was really cute when he sat down and goes, okay, so we're first cousins. What does that mean? Yes. <laughs> what does that and mean? And every genealogist stood up and said, "I can tell you. <laughs> I can tell you. I can tell you. I can tell you." So, um, so this uh, first cousin of his was the son of John's father's sister. So their 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 parents were siblings, and so um, and you know, as John said, this is the first biological relative I've ever hugged. You know, this is the first. This is the first one, and and I think that he is very content with his his adopted family i think he yeah. he had said that you know he he's not doing this because there's issues or problems with that he just wanted he just wanted to know where he came from and 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 who he was and so they did sit down and and have that hard talk about um about his dad and that there had been problems and and some substance abuse in that side of the family and 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 they found out that they grew up really close to each other <laughs> so mm -hmm. Yeah, in the Bay Area, like 45 yeah, minutes apart. Yeah, in the Bay Area. But I like that John was very, he was, well, you know, I tried to stay away from that and keep myself clean and, and not have any substance abuse problems, but I've got no judgment. People are people and things happen. And so yeah. I'm not yeah. going to sit back and judge them. And I thought that was, I thought that was really very mature on yeah. yes. to, to, to deal with it like that. And so I'm hoping... I'm hoping as they move through his journey that he'll be able to to meet his his biological parents that there won't be but any he, issues. He found out the name. He found out well, how yes. did he it? what his last name would have been. Yeah, had he yeah. I can't remember how he put it, but he yeah, found he put, out his dad's name. Yeah, he's. I think he said. I think he said. I found out what my blood last name would have been. I think that's how he put it. it. <laughs> I saw a picture of his dad and yes. I, his first dad's first name is Neil, but I didn't quite catch the last name. I, I know. I wrote down Rebels, but I don't know. Ruggles. R-U-G-G-L-E-S. Yeah, well, that's Ruggles. what I put down was R-U-G-G-L-E-S. Yeah. Uh, but I thought, oh, he looks I like, like a Neil. <laughs> he says he looks like a Neil, but he did look like him. You know, of course, mm -hmm. he had yeah. sunglasses on, so he couldn't see the eyes. But yeah, he definitely looked like him. You could see that that family resemblance. And and, and just to, that's got to be the most awesome thing. And, you know, we talk about that all the time as they find somebody and see those pictures and it's somebody that looks like you. It's got to be. It's a big deal. Yeah. 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 It's got to be a really big deal. And you know about that. So yeah, um, I think that's why it's such a good thing that you've asked um, that you're a fan and you've said, hey, I'd love to come on <laughs> because we, you uh, have that perspective from you. Yeah. I'm adopted and then I'm also a birth mother. So yeah. I get two out of the three perspectives yeah. kind of, but yeah, to, you know, my, you, you know, my mom, my adopted yeah. mom is, you know, five yeah. foot one, <laughs> red hair, freckles, right. you know, and I don't, I don't look like anybody, you yeah. know, in my adopted family. And so I, when I met my grandfather, my birth mother's father, he uh -huh. was the one where I was like, 
okay. <laughs> I look like you. That's, that's where cool. that's where it comes from. That's Did so you cool. feel like something just kind of in your brain just went, okay. Yeah. And it's not, you know, it's not because my parents aren't amazing. It's not, you know, it's just that's it's like I look like them. Okay. Yeah, this, yeah. That's why I look the way I look. I get yeah. it. Now. <laughs> it's that connection. It's that it's yeah. that filling those gaps in those holes. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Exactly. Um and then, you know, we, we go to Team Black and that was another really sad. Oh, man. Story. It was sad. It, Which was, was, it was confusing, but sad. I just. Well, yeah. it was Carolyn again. And so I felt sorry for Tia because. Yeah, I did. You know, I did. I was like, oh, let's hope that she gets the next two. I hope so. But she seemed to handle it okay. She's a very kind of quiet person anyway. And so I couldn't tell if she was a little frustrated. But, but I mean, they did the whole group hug and she was talking and it was all good. Um, no, uh-huh. I mean, but the way she said it, like, too, like, they said something in, um, Carolyn was saying something about the person she met. Yeah. And, and then Tia said, we love her. She yeah, loved her. exactly. It was exactly. a we. It was I a just, we. We love her. And who she met was her niece. And her niece's name is amazing. <laughs> amazing Baker. Amazing. amazing Baker. Isn't that cute? And amazing. her sister's name is Miracle. Yeah. Oh, Yeah. Well, yeah, Mason. You know, Miracle. I didn't even put that together. Yeah, right. we yeah. met. We met Miracle last week because remember she met her her um her sister, but we realized yeah, right. that that niece was not the sister's daughter. Remember, and yes, so now, now we kind of know why, um, because um her she met another niece, and this niece amazing was telling her that her mother, this other sister, um, was in the hospital. And she couldn't meet her and she wouldn't probably be able to meet her because she's been in a coma for years. Like decades? Like, yeah, it sounds yeah. like since, yeah. since Amazing was a little girl. Little, little. Yeah, yeah. And she referred to it as a vegetative state, Sweet. which sounds yeah. pretty permanent. Yeah, and and said that there's several different family stories and I'm really not quite sure exactly what happened. Yeah. The cause this to, to happen to her. So, but, um, so she's, Amazing is young. She's, she's, um, she was talking about, um, ending up in foster care. She had lived with her aunt for a while and then she ended up in foster care from that. And that when she aged out of foster care, (laughs) which she usually do at at 18, when you graduate from, from high school, um, they gave her a CASA worker and that's a caseworker to help you, um, move on from that and kind of take care of you and help you move forward. Adjust. yeah, that CASA worker is the one that gave her the DNA test that kind of got them all connected together. And so the just one of these things that happens on relative race is Carolyn looked at her and went, wait a second, because we know Carolyn's a lawyer, right? She said, I've been a CASA worker. That was really awesome. It was awesome. It, and yeah. she understands the whole growing up in foster care. She, So they are going to bond and that is going to be a tight Oh, bond. yeah. Yeah, between oh, yeah. them. For because, sure. because of that so I thought that was really really interesting that and that's how she got that DNA test I thought that was super cool super super yeah cool. that was like Providence kind of oh thing. oh yeah oh absolutely what a cool gift from a CASA worker like that's yeah. they, they should all do that <laughs> they should all do that absolutely they should well I don't know I mean I think you know you my personal opinion is you know Somebody from the outside doesn't know whether or not you really want to use this. this. I think the yeah. worker probably knew that she, she was like, interested. But yeah. um, I also, and we talked about it last week. I really thought that it was more amazing that needed Carolyn than yeah. the other round. Exactly. Each other. So um, yes, another yeah, another one where she needed her. I mean, they need each other, but amazing really needs Carolyn. She really needs that connection and that, you know, that and she kept saying, I don't know my mom would love to have met you, you know. Mm. And that she didn't get to how she was protective of her mother. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah, they did show some more of an advocate. I don't know if that's protective is yeah, the right word, yeah. but she advocated yeah. for her mother. Yeah, yeah. They did show some pictures, and she said she didn't get to to go see her very much um, once she got into foster care because it's, you know, it's just 
it's a different thing when you get into foster care. And so, and, and she said there was a lot of miles in between where her mom mm-hmm. was in the hospital and where she was in foster care. And so she didn't get to go and, and uh, see her very often. So, but um, just a very, a very, very sad, very sad story. You know, I just, that, that just broke my heart. And, and I think it broke Carolyn's heart too a little bit. Cause she was just like, Oh, <laughs> Oh, <laughs> you know? And so that made a lot of sense as to why she met. Cause I thought, why would you meet a sister on day one and a niece that didn't belong to that sister? Now it kind of makes a little bit of sense. Uh, yeah, and Probably that niece lives more closer to the first sister that gave her the beautiful necklace. And so that's, that's probably why, I mean, we don't know where they live, but um, yeah, it made a little bit more sense once you got into the story. So um, yeah, we've got some really compelling stories mm. this year we always think oh how could they find you know people with stories that we're really going to connect to on another season you know as yes as a rural of you know <laughs> how are we going to find more but they always do they're very good about casting the right people looking at these stories and finding the right people that well it's um, just because like why i always say everybody who's ever walked on the face of this earth has a story to tell has a story to tell absolutely you know i mean it doesn't and yeah. there's no such thing as a boring ancestor yeah they all have a story to tell so and that's our job is to tell that story so i think yeah. i love relative race for that that yeah. that they they have arranged their episodes and their seasons so that it tells a a story and so it it's great story. it doesn't it, and, and we've talked about this and it's they're not in it for shock value they're not in it right for, you know tabloid they're they're yeah. in it to tell the story and 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 like dan always says it's it's all about family this is about mm-hmm. family yep. number one that's what this is about there's always going to be family at the end of the day you know for you to go and meet so and then of course speaking of that <laughs> Mm-hmm. you know we always we get into it and all of a sudden next thing you know we've got the office scene and then, yeah, you, you know, see that computers. high rise and you're like oh, oh that's right you know you're all full of emotion and tears and you see the high rise and you're like yeah. <laughs> it is a it's a contest too it is a, it is a race and they're all talking about they're all worried about because yeah. each of them had some kind of problem but let me tell you though Team Black has been very smart in who they're getting their information to get to their relatives. They're, they're finding maps and places that nobody else, you know, travel agents. They're very creative. They're very, very creative and where, and everybody else is doing the typical, you know, give me directions. They got some good directions this time. So mm-hmm. everybody did really well with that is, is finding, finding their relatives place. Um, but they were all kind of worried, you know, oh, I wonder if it's going to be us today, which which they kind of do. And and of course, um, they were saying, oh, the blue team, oh, if we get last place, we're going to cry. And I'm like, don't say things like that. <laughs> don't throw that out there. But um, again, one of my favorite parts of the show is when they get to introduce their relatives to the other team members. And, and we know that that lasts a little bit longer than what we get to see. And so I know that we miss something but um i'm i'm loving thaddeus every week dan the man he said <laughs> dan the man this is who i got to meet i love that so i hope he says it every week dan the man um so of course you know he gets to to show them his brother and, and dances that was he looks like a character just like you <laughs> so that was really fun and yeah they're just so proud to show everybody and so excited to show everybody who they met and to introduce them and uh and they're also excited for each other you know because that's where those bonds are are continuing because they know how it feels to meet somebody you know so except for portia hopefully next <laughs> week, yeah, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully next week she will meet somebody you know but she's experiencing it with with um you know her teammate with carolyn and and so you know that she wouldn't be on the race if they I don't know if she's not going to meet somebody so we just need to be patient but it is hard so um and of course then of course we have to have you know the results <laughs> we have to and this time they said whoever comes in first gets to penalize all the team yep. next in time. other words they get an advantage <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly in other words they're going to get an advantage that's what i'm hoping but uh, what was funny going well I won't, say that. I won't say that because i'll I'll say what they said at the end when we say who won <laughs> and who gets to do the advantage what they said about penalizing that was really funny um anyway so there was only three minutes again 
There's three minutes. So close. I know. It's amazing that they can they can get that close. I still can't get over last week when there was a tie between between the two teams. And so, oh, so I mean, how does that happen? You know? How does like how does really, that... how does that happen? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's just that is just weird. But another relative race first, you know. Um, so Team Black comes in number one, you know. So they're like, yes, they're all excited. And then when they did interview them at the end, and this was like what I almost said ahead of time. <laughs> interviewing about giving the penalty and 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 tia very sweet says i don't want to give them a penalty and carolyn goes I do. <laughs> yeah. this is a game we're gonna win <laughs> game. i love them but let's penalize them because they would penalize us if it was if it was the other way around and or then, as laura would say yeah. let's take our advantage <laughs> exactly that's right let's take our advantage absolutely absolutely so it'll be interesting to see what that is um next week on day three and then Team Red came in, number two. I was so grateful. I was so worried because oh. right up front, you don't want somebody to have two strikes because they two got strikes no. no, 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 no. Because, you know, our goal, if they would listen to us, all the fans, right? Our goal is everybody get to day 10. <laughs> so I know I was thinking that last night, I'm like, why couldn't they just, instead of sending them home, they're like, you just can't go to the final. Yeah. But, we'll but you can see who you meet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And they and they and yeah, they have been doing that, you know, letting us see who they meet. Oh, so one more. Ticket. They give them those golden tickets. So let's hope that the golden ticket is still gonna be. But we don't want the golden ticket till day nine if they're gonna <laughs> so if somebody's gonna get one, because then we we've seen everything, every all the stuff. So but um anyway, so then we have to hold our breath and see who's gonna get that third strike. And unfortunately it was team blue and team green. I mean, not, I mean, it's just, it is what it is. So we got two teams now with a, with a strike. And I thought, Oh, team blue, you said you were going to cry. <laughs> if you got that, if you got that strike, it was kind of a foreboding and, but I'm sure it's the way they ended it because they had said that too, you know, and they yeah. put it there to, to make it even sadder for us all as we see, but as Dan said, he always says tomorrow is another day on relative race and um, anything can happen and there's always family. Um, so it was another good, it was another good day. Um, uh, good day for the, for the teams. And but like we said, we just are praying for Tia that she won't find somebody <laughs> next on day three. You know, I hope she gets days three and four. <laughs> and, so, and then they'll go back and forth after that. So is there anything that, Anybody wanted to bring up from any of the teams that we didn't talk about that you can think that touched you or that um, maybe we didn't mention? Because I don't want to leave anything out. Um, you covered everything that was in my notes. So I'm good. Yeah, me too. And and, <laughs> and y'all just always know just, just to jump in there and say, hey, 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 let's talk about this or whatever, you know. Yeah. So. Sure. But yeah, I think, I think we, I think we touched everything. I think, um, all the reunions this week were so sweet and kind and, and those connections were wonderful. I didn't worry about anybody, <laughs> you know, sometimes mm. I, eh, I wonder how that's going to be. <laughs> you know, you know, they, all, they all really have been very kind. Yeah. yeah. And like very yeah. accepting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and everybody's, I feel like, I feel like the stories, especially the background stories mm -hmm. are maybe a little more intense than they have been yeah some in of past that. seasons yeah yeah but, and you know, you know, I, they, mean, I think there's just more intense stories within the one yeah the, the one season usually it there is one intense story yeah there's usually like season, one but there's several yeah there's mm -hmm. more and, there's more this time. Like. and i i want tia to find people because i want to learn more about her story and until she connects with somebody we're really not going to know and she yeah. seems to have the most intense story she seems to be the one that did not have a good relationship with maybe some of her adopted family. At least that's the way it, it sounded on day one. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a, I'm super eager for her to meet like family that just embraces her. And, exactly. Yeah. And, and can like, help loves the heck out of her and like, yes. you know, heal, heal. Yes, her. heal what that is going on in her. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So let's hope that happens for her on day three. Let's hope, um, like Dan jokes, let's hope it's not going to be a third cousin five times removed. That they're actually <laughs> going to find somebody that can answer a lot of questions for her. And, and usually they do. 
usually they do. And so for sure, let's hope for her on day three. Well, thank you everybody for coming and talking to us about day two. Um, I can't believe we're into season 11 and we're on day two. It goes, it always goes by so fast. Before you know it, we're going to be talking about day 10 and we're going to try to have a reunion of the teams and like we, like we usually try to do. So um, thanks for watching everybody. And I hope that you're enjoying this season. And if you have any thoughts or questions that you want to, to post and either in the blog post or, um, in, in YouTube underneath the, the YouTube video, please put your thoughts. And we really do appreciate those of you that watch and, and comment and let us know that you're watching. So we appreciate you very, very much. And with that, we will see you next time on Gen Friends. Bye everybody. Bye.